Okay, so uh, we are now in the final topic of the semester, which is on topic 11, shift registers and counters. So uh, what does it mean by registers? We have looked a little bit about registers in the, in the, in the first slide, uh, in, the, in the previous topic. Uh, so registers are usually realized as several flip-flops with common control signals that control the movement of data to and from the register. So for example here, uh, we have a common clock. Okay, we have a common clock all the way to the registers. And we have a D0, uh, D1, D2, D3. And the output is Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3. So for example here, if we put 0, 1, 1, 0 on D, and we give a positive edge of the clock all at the same time and what will happen is the Q at the positive edge of the clock will become 0, 1, 1, 0. Okay, so basically it's just a transfer of data from a 4-bit D to a 4-bit Q. So let's look at the timing. Uh, so we are uh, assuming it's a positive edge figured uh, uh, registers. So um, a positive edge occurs uh, in the clock signal transition from 0 to 1. So uh, in this case, we have a positive edge of the clock at these positions there. And um, the Q output, okay, so the Q output here, the D here is our input. Um, we'll look at the value of the D at the positive edge of the clock. So for example here at the positive edge of the clock the value of D is 0, 0, 1, 0 and therefore it will be transferred to the output Q to have 0, 0, 1, 0. And it's going to maintain all the way until it sees the next positive edge of the clock which is here. Okay, it's going to maintain the value and we'll see that at the next positive edge of the clock we have 0, 0, 0, 1 and therefore the output now becomes 0, 0, 001 and it's going to maintain all the way until it sees the next positive edge of the clock and it's a uh, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. So notice that uh, this uh, D input is ignored uh, because uh, the output Q only takes at the positive edge of the clock. Okay, so positive edge transfer 1, 1, 1 all the way until the next positive edge of the clock and at this moment we have 0, 1, 1, 0 is going to be transferred through so essentially what we can say is that the output of the register Q actually depends on the positive edge of the clock and also the value of D at that particular moment and it will maintain its value uh, if there is no positive edge of the clock So what is a shift register? So a shift register is a register which means a multi-bit flip-flop. Multi-bit flip-flop which can shift the data left or right when a shift signal is applied. All the flip-flops are driven by a common clock and a common reset. There are four types of shift registers. The CISO, CIPO, PISO and PIPO which stands for, um, should be in the next slide. Okay, uh, what it means by CISO, CIPO and PISO. So some of the applications of the shift registers um, include producing a time delay and also converting data from parallel to serial or vice versa. So let's have a look at the example of what the shift register is actually doing. So the first example is the serial in and serial out. So serial in means that this is our D um, and um, what it's doing is it's going to the data is going to come in and when we give a clock pulse the data is going to come out at that particular moment in a serial fashion so um, basically at the positive edge of the clock this will be transferred here will be transferred there will be transferred there and will be transferred to the output so basically it's a serial in and the serial out okay uh, the next one is the serial in parallel out so serial in parallel out will put in the data and the output of the data will come out in parallel so you can see here is a is parallel out okay and here is a serial serial in okay so so what it means is that when we give a pulse clock pulse uh zero to one transition on the clock signal so what will happen is 
uh, the data will be transferred down here. Uh, the data currently in here will be transferred down, transferred down, and transferred down to the output. Okay. Uh, next, we have a parallel in, parallel out. So parallel in, parallel out is just uh, we have the parallel data in here, and then we have um, uh, so, sorry, parallel in serial out. Okay, so a serial out there. Okay, so um, so data comes in. Okay, at the positive edge clock, it will be stored through, and then uh, the data will be coming out serially. So parallel in, parallel out. So you have parallel data coming in, and then we have a parallel data coming out. Okay, uh, counters. A counter circuit. So a counter is a sequential machine that produces specified count sequence. The count changes when the input clock is asserted. So some of the implementation options include a synchronous or asynchronous. So in this class, we'll cover synchronous counters. We are not going to cover the asynchronous. Um, the clock trigger can be both. We're going to look at both the positive H and also the negative H trigger. Uh, the counting sequence, it can be binary, which is counting one by one, one, two, three, four. It could also be a decade counter where it counts from 10, 20, 30, and so on. The count direction can be up, down, or up, down, or some random. The flip-flop we use can be K, K, T, or D. And there's also the specialty counters, specifically which we're going to look at, uh, include counters with upgrade sequence and also shift register counters. Um, Okay, we look more in detail that one. So let's look at first on the design of a synchronous counter. So there are four steps to designing a, a synchronous counter. Um, step number one is to derive the state transition diagram. Step number two is to derive the next state and the state transition tables. Number three, using the K-maps, derive the logic expression, and finally implement the circuit. So let's look at the example here where we want to implement a counter uh, starting with a reset is going to set our output equals to zero output of the flip-flop equals to zero at the max clock we're going to set um, output equals to one and then uh, from one it goes to one zero one zero zero one one and all the way through so um, essentially what we want to do is uh, if we have a, a clock signal for example Okay, so at every positive edge of the clock, uh, we want our Q to be, um, uh, so initially if it's 0, 0, 0, then uh, 0, 0, 0 trans transfer to 0, 0, 1. So at the next clock, it will be 0, 0, 1. 0, 0, 1, next, next stage, uh, next uh, state is 0, 1, 0. So it's going to go 0, 1, 0 here. Okay, so 0, 0, 1 to 0, 1, 0. So at every positive edge of the clock, okay, we are going to go to 0, 1, 1, and so on. Okay. So what, what it means by the state transition is that uh, we want to change the output of the register Q, the 3-bit register Q. Uh, it will change its state at every uh, positive or negative edge of the clock. Okay, and, and Q is simply uh, a 3-bit register. So we have um, we have a common clock, DQ, DQ with a common clock. So here is our Q2, for example, Q1, Q0. Okay, so at, at every um, uh, positive edge of the clock, uh, we want to have the output uh, keep changing to the sequence that we want. Okay. So how to design this? Uh, first of all, we derive the state transition diagram. Once we know um, how the um, uh, the sequence will change, okay, from 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Next, we derive the next state table and the state transition. So in the next state table state transition, we have what is called the present state. We have the next state, we have the output transition, and we have the flip-flop inputs. So we know that we are from 0, 0, 0, we are going to go to 0, 0, 1. From 0, 0, 1, we're going to 0, 1, 0 according to our state diagram here. So 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 
and so on so so here is if our present state is 0 0 0 we give a clock the next state will be 0 0 1 if we are currently in 0 0 1 we give a, uh, the clock uh, our state uh, our next state will be 0 1 0 okay uh, so you can see the transition here for q2 for q2 the transition is actually 0 to 0 okay and for for q1 the transition is 0 to 0 okay and finally for q0 we have a transition from 0 to 1 okay so so we have a 0 to 1 transition let's look at another example here so uh let's say we are in this state we are in 0 1 0 0 which is a 4 the next state will be 5 so for q2 we have 1 going to 1 like this q1 we have 0 going to 0 so we have 0 0 and for q0 we have 0 going to 1 so we have 0 going to 1 okay so we just uh, simply complete our state transition table okay so let's remove all this so make sure you understand how to uh, uh how to derive the next state table and the state transition so using a t flip-flop we know that uh the input of the flip-flop if we want to go from state zero to a zero then we don't want to flip so we're going to put the, the t input equals to 0. Okay, so uh, for example, if we put a 0, maintain. Okay, so in this case, we want to maintain and that's why we put a 0. However, if we want to flip it, okay, for example here, okay, um, we want to flip it, we want uh, to have uh, here from 0 becomes 1 then we need to supply a logic 1 and that's why we have a logic 1 there on t0 so when we give the logic 1 on t0 then the output q will flip from 0 to 1 okay so um, from this okay let's look at another example here we can look at another example so 1 to 1 our t2 will be 0 because we want to maintain uh, 0 to 0 also maintain and that's why we have a 0 uh, however for this one okay for q0 we have 0 to 1 is a flip okay whereby initially um, the q is 0 we want to make it a 1 and therefore our flip flop uh, input t0 uh, during that state is actually 1 okay, because we want to flip okay so similar, similarly here this is maintain uh, this is a flip and this is a flip okay so we can just complete the the flip flop inputs and from here we can get the k map okay we use the k map to derive the logic expression uh, so uh, in this case uh, this is for t2 so we know that for t2 okay so um, these are the outputs okay and these are our inputs okay based on the present state and and uh, the output okay so you can see here the present state so for example uh, if if the input is 0 0 0 we have t2 equals to 0 okay uh, so so for t2 if 0 0 0 we have a 0 Okay, if 0, 1, 1, we have a 1. So let's have a look for T2. If 0, 1, 1 here, we have 1. Okay, so that's why 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, we have a 1 there. Okay, so so we can complete the, the K map here. Okay, for 0, 1, all this. And finally, we can get our T2 equals to Q1, Q0. We can do the same for, for T1, we can do the same for T0, and we get our K map here for T1, K map for T0, okay, using again, this is our present state, present state, okay, present state, okay, 
Okay, so um, and here is t0 equals to 1, t1 equals to q0. And from here, we can then obtain the circuit implementation whereby we have uh, t2 equals to q1 dot q0. So q1 is here, uh, q1 and q0 is here. So we can see that here is in fact q1 dot q0 okay which is equals to t2 is the input there so t, t2 equals to q1 dot q0 what about t1 so t1 here is here t1 is actually equals to equals to uh, q0 okay so equals to q0 um so this is in fact q0 and this is in fact q1 okay and and finally here we have um our our t0 here is equals to 1 okay just uh, connect to the VDD so this is our circuit implementation whereby we can expect uh, we can expect that um, at the positive edge of the clock okay if for example um, if for example our uh, our Q okay our Q is okay so 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 then we have uh, a q present and a q next okay so so we'll, we'll talk more about this later in class uh, during the exercise session uh, so let's look at the next example so the next example we have a four bit counter uh, which is now an arbitrary uh, number counting okay an arbitrary number counting so uh, in this example given a state tra transition diagram with a state transition at every positive edge of the clock okay so for example um, this is from zero going to three three goes to uh, nine 9 goes to 5, 5 goes to 1, and 1 goes to 3. Okay, so this is a, an arbitrary sequence. And uh, once we have this, the next step, step number 2, uh, state transition table. State transition table. And then we have the K-map. And then we have the circuit. So these are the steps that we need to do. Uh, so let's see how we can derive the state transition table. Okay. So we know that the present state, next state, output transition, flip clock inputs, and uh, the present state, if we are in 0, the next state will be 3. So we can see here, if we are in 0, the next state will be 3. If we are in 3, the next state will be 9. Okay. So if we are in 3 here, the next state will be 9. If we are in 1, the next state will be 3. 5 goes to 1, 9 goes to 5. Okay, so complete the present state, complete the next state, and then we have the output transition. So in the output transition, we can see that for Q3, 0, 0, okay, Q2, 0, 0, Q1, 0, 1, and Q0, 0, 1. Okay, let's look at another example. Q3, 0, 1. Q2, 0, 0, Q1, 1, 0, Q0, 1, 1. Okay, so, uh, so make sure you know how to complete the output transition for all the values. And once we have the output transition, we know that uh, for a D flip-flop, uh, it's going to follow, uh, in fact, the next state transition. So um, here is, in fact, equals to here. Uh, 3 is equals to 3, 9 is equals to 9, 1 is equals to 1, and 5 is equals to 5. Okay, simply because we want to set the output of the flip-flop is actually the next state. Okay, so as mentioned here, taking the present state as inputs, use the K-maps to find D3, D2, D1, D0, and use don't care conditions when necessary. So, um, given, given the present state and given... Uh, the inside here for D3, 
d2 d0 d1 so for example here this is our k map input k map input okay which is the present state and here will be uh, the four k map outputs okay the four k map output so we have one k map for d3 one k map for d2 one k map for d1 and one k map for d0 for these uh, inputs okay and we also have the don't care condition because um for example what should be the flip-flop inputs when our condition is 0, 0, 1, 0, for example because it's not being defined okay or even one 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 uh, it's not being defined in the table so in this case is simply x x x x uh, for those that is not defined in the state transition diagram okay so means that for example one 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 is an x one 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 zero is an x so these are all x and using the x's and ones we can then derive the k map as we've seen in the previous lecture okay so we get the d3 equals to q1 d2 equals to q3 we have a long equation there for d1 and we have d0 equals to 1 so then from there we can just derive our circuit implementation um, whereby we have a d0 equals to 1 so d0 equals to 1 all common clock and reset uh, d1 is q3 plus q2 plus q1 bar so this is the condition there um, so q3 is coming from here okay q3 q2 is coming here so this is q1 q2 q3 which is all the output of the uh, d2 which is q3 okay so d2 here is equals to q3 coming from here d3 equals to q1 so q1 is coming from here q1 okay so um so this circuit will work uh, meaning that um it's going to keep transitioning okay from um from one state to another as specified in the transition state transition diagram Okay, so let's look at the specialty counter, uh, the ring counter, and also the Johnson counters. Okay, our last two counters. So what is a ring counter? So a ring counter is a circular shift register based on SIPO with only one flip-flop being set at a particular time, and all others are cleared. The single bit shifted from one flip-flop to the other produces a sequence of timing signals. So let's look at the example here. Um, so if you reset the thing, uh, the, the flip-flops, okay, we reset the register, we are going to get at time 0, um, all the outputs here will be 0, okay, so this is at time 0, we have all the output of the, of the flip-flop to be 0. Now, at the negative edge of the clock, okay, as the clock go down, negative edge of the clock, um, then, we see that here, here, here is a 1. Since Q is 0, therefore Q bar is a 1. So 1, 1, 1. Here is going to get 1. 1 on the D. So when we give a negative edge of the clock, this 1 is going to transfer here. This 0 is going to transfer there. Transfer, transfer. Okay. And what is going to happen is at the next clock, this 1 will be uh, 1, 0. Okay. This is this is going to be zero because this is transferred there. So this is zero, one, zero, one, zero. Okay, and now we have zero, one, one, zero, zero. Okay, so we can see that in fact uh, the value of one is going to get transferred. So initially we are going to have one zero zero zero. Uh, the one is going to be transferred to the next register so this one is going to go there because of the end gate here is now zero okay going here uh, zero zero and then this one is going to be transferred there this one is going to be transferred there and then it's going to go start back again okay so basically it's a it's a circular shift whereby we see that the one that is shifting to the right one by one and then go and start again 
okay so this behavior is called the ring counter and um, finally is the Johnson counter so Johnson counter can be used to generate a square wave and divide the clock frequency it is basically modified from a CISO shift register where the output from the last flip clock is inverted and fed back to the input so let's analyze this so initially let's assume that all in all of this is zero and therefore your QD bar is equals to one so this is going to be one and we're going to apply a positive edge of the clock we're going to apply a positive edge clock for each one so when we apply the positive edge of the clock this one is going to be transferred here okay so Q equals to D at the positive edge of the clock and this zero is going to be transferred this zero is going to be transferred this is transferred this is still going to maintain a one value okay so that is why we can see here that um, initially here it will be one QA plus here is going to be one zero 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 and then one one zero zero one 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 Okay, because uh, the one is the, the the values being transferred here, we can see. Okay, um, zero, one, 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 one. Now, when all is one, uh, we can make a new analysis. Okay, when we have uh, QA, QB, QC, QD. Uh, okay, this QD here. When they all equals to one, here will be equals to zero. Okay, so then zero will go there, and when we clock it, clock it, this zero is going to be transferred here, this one is going to be transferred there, one transfer, one transfer, and then zero will come back again. Okay, so that's the reason why we have a zero here, okay, and then one, one, one. Zero will be transferred, one, one, zero will be transferred, one. And finally, we have 0, 0, 0, 0, back to the beginning, and we have 1, 0, 0, 0. Okay, so uh, that's basically the characteristics for the Johnson counter. And, and with that, we have concluded uh, all of our topics uh, for this semester, and we'll discuss more about the exercise uh, later in class.